more on Islamic finance, I spoke to Hussein Askari. He's a professor of international business and international affairs at George Washington University. And I asked him what the core principles of Islamic finance are. Well, there is one essential element of Islamic finance that once you understand that, everything else basically follows from that. And Islamic finance basically says that all contracts should be risk sharing and not risk shifting. Once you say that, the immediate thing that follows is that you cannot have debt, which is of course a risk shifting contract, because if I lend you money uh, and you agree to pay me a fixed rate of interest, you are taking all the risk. And so in Islamic finance, you cannot have debt contracts which carry a fixed rate of interest. And of course, if I may, that then means a lot of other things. It means that you cannot, in fact, uh, have uh, uh, any contracts that have too much uncertainty. You cannot have contracts of gambling nature. You cannot have a mortgage contract because that is debt. Student loans cannot be done because the student is taking all the, uh, all the risk because he, he or she borrows money and then has to pay the bank back whether they have a job or not. So many, many things actually follow from that one thing, which says that all contracts should be risk sharing. And probably the most important thing that also comes out of that, besides the fact that you cannot have interest bearing debt, is that it changes the whole nature of the banking system of a country. So if charging interest is forbidden, then how would an Islamic home mortgage work, for example? Well, the way that would work is that you look at a house, you want this house, you go to an entity, a bank, whatever you want to call them, and they will own this house with you in partnership. And over time, you would, in fact, pay them a lease rate. And over time, at the end of that period, then you could buy the house from them. And of course, you have paid them, depending on the lease rate that you have paid, you can all the time you are owning a larger percentage of the house. But if everything goes bust, like happened in the United States with the housing market, you do not take all the risk. You do not lose all your down payment. The bank is taking some of the risk also, because the bank owns the house along with you for a certain period of time. Islamic investing and financing has been part of the uh, formal global financial system since the 1970s. So why are we seeing such an increased interest in it now? I think there are probably three reasons. Uh, as you said, um, it really began in the 1970s. And the reason why it began then, the main reason, is that oil revenues basically jumped for a number of Muslim countries. And they had excess cash, they had excess reserves. And so people in the country became wealthier and they had to find outlets for their investment. I think that was the first important reason. The second, I think, is that when you look at many Muslim countries, a large percentage of the people are what we call unbanked. They did not have bank accounts. And so now they're now getting bank accounts, they're getting into finance. And I think they have now become more aware of the, what their religion says. And so they demand assets or asset classes that are, in fact, you know, compatible with Islam. So how big is the worldwide Islamic finance industry in terms of market value compared to the global financial system? When you look at Islamic assets or Islamic compliant assets, uh, there are many estimates, but I think they go from something around maybe one and a half to two trillion dollars, which is roughly one and a quarter to one and a half percent of the total, uh, you know, financial assets in the world. So it's a very, very small. But I think what is important is that Islamic finance has increased most rapidly in the last 10, 15 years as compared to, uh, you know, conventional finance. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.